Hello everybody and welcome back to the deck guy. Today we're taking a look at Nilfgaard which is an archetype um, I don't even know what to call this one um, Enemy boost steal. I don't know you basically the, the, the gist of this deck is you boost up your opponent's cards And then you steal their power, which is a weird archetype one would think at first glance this deck is very Dependent on your opponent's deck um, But for the most part actually this deck can do very well against any number of decks The only thing it's really vulnerable to is like a deck that plays Yurden or multiple tall punishes can be a bit awkward or maybe some engine based decks this deck does lack control but for what it lacks in control it makes up with a ridiculous amount of points actually um there is just so much value to be made here so let's discuss how this deck works because this is a very unique deck and also a whole new leader ability as well got added just to support this deck so what does this leader ability do well to send to send hospitality to Santois, something like that um hospitality this is going to basically it's going to have a passive and an active obviously the passive being that every time an enemy unit is boost or every time you boost one of your enemy enemy units you will get one boost to random allied units so <clears throat> there are obviously going to be a lot of cards that are going to boost enemy units so this is probably going to get on average about seven or eight points may, uh, roughly the passive throughout the course of the game and the active ability is going to spawn and play a Boohurt. So what does Boohurt do? Boohurt is going to boost an enemy by three and then boost an allied unit by nine. So you might think that's only worth six points but first of all it's worth seven points because of the leader passive and boosting an enemy unit is often going to be beneficial towards you making this card actually very often a 12 point play or more. Um, so what does this deck, how does this deck function? So um, basically, Beauclair, this is going to be one of our payoff cards. It's going to be a location. It's going to have resilience, so it carries over. It's going to set an allied unit's power to match the highest power of an enemy unit. And then order ability reset the power of a unit. So you can use this as a double tall punish. Now, I say double tall punish because stealing the power of your opponent's highest unit is kind of like a tall punish for you. You're getting benefit from it. So, <clears throat> do try to keep this in mind, though, is this card and... and um, Ivar have a little bit of anti-synergy because typically you want to play this card before Ivar because Ivar is going to steal all the power so you need to play this card before you start stealing their power so got to keep that in mind um, but otherwise this card is going to be basically just a double tall punish very valuable in this deck and <clears throat> of course it is going to have carrier value Heatwave you could play a Leo in this deck, you could play a Vilga Forts in this deck instead. I was playing Heatwave just because I was a little bit scared of this Foglet deck that I saw popping around. So just in case of this Foglet deck, you have the Heatwave to banish their location so they don't get value from their Frost. But you can change this out for a Vilga Forts or Leo or <clears throat> maybe even Yurden if you really want to. Although Yurden I think has a bit of anti synergy in this deck, but any other tall punish is fine. Then Ramon, spawn and play um, a bronze, a base cup of a bronze allied unit. You can use it for any of these bronzes, um, these soldiers, and of course that's, these soldiers are actually going to play for quite a bit of points, especially Nilf Guardian Knight. Nilf Guardian Knight plays for way more than 8 points in this deck, by the way. Then Ivar, this is going to be probably the strongest card in this deck. Very insane card, this card basically just allowing you to win round 1 so, so easily. Absolutely insane. When I say insane, this card, I think minimum points is going to play for like 30 in this deck. It is absolutely mind-blowing how much points Ivar can play for in this deck. There's so many synergies with it and it is so easy to just play this card for 30 plus points. Ridiculous value. So what does Ivar do? Swaps its own power with an enemy unit and the Adrenaline 2, it will no longer do that but instead will do 4 damage instead. So you need to play this card before you have um, before you reach Adrenaline 2 but if you do and you boost up an opponent's card to a ridiculous amount, you can basically play Ivar, steal all that power and put it on Ivar, which is going to be playing for a absolutely stupid amount of points. Then we play Kahir. Kahir is going to be a little bit reworked now. So now it no longer gets unconditional boost every time an enemy unit gets boosted. But rather only when um, an enemy unit gets boosted during your turn, it will now get boosted. So to make up for it, it's now 7 power. So it's a little bit harder to kill at first. Um, and this can obviously have synergy with your leader ability, with, with the boo hurts, with... So many different things in this deck. It's going to very easily play for 40 plus points. And if your opponent doesn't have a tall punish, it's, you know, just a 40, 50 point card, which is just nuts. Fion, this is going to be just defender there just to help protect things like Kahir. Or you, you are going to go very, very tall in this deck. So if you can get your, your Fion to eat a tall punish or a hard removal, that can be quite valuable. Gilem, very, very strong card in this deck. Also synergizing very well with Molten and Kahir. What Gilem is going to do, it's going to boost self and the enemy unit by half of their combined power. 
And then if it has a grace 14, it can also, on audibility, move all the stats from enemy to self. So if they have vitality or defender status or a shield or resilience, you can use Galeem to basically steal those statuses. Um, <clears throat> very, very valuable on things like Surrey Nova, by the way, because not only does it copy their statuses, but it also takes them entirely. So you want to use Galeem typically with things like a here, or you want to use it with Milton, which I'll discuss in a, in a second, or you can use this obviously set up a, a bigger Ivar potentially. So you're going to boost up an enemy card, and then once that card is boosted up enough, you're going to play Galeem, and you're going to boost up even further and boost up Galeem, and then you're going to steal all that power back with Ivar later on, or Heatwave, or Beauclair, or whatever. Then there's going to be um, Palmerin. So Palmerin and Milton are going to be a little bit of a duo. How they work is Palmerin is going to choose an unboosted enemy unit, then play the top card from your deck and boost that card up not the card you pull but the enemy unit you just selected boost that card up by the provision card of the card that you just played from the top of your deck and if you control Milton um, you can look at the top three cards and play any one of them so this is going to basically give you a little bit of a way to tutor your deck it's also going to give you a way to um, <clears throat> boost up an enemy unit and obviously boost up enemy units is very valuable for very obvious reasons and um, it's also going to synergize with Milton, which I'll discuss in just a second. Um, Nick is going to give you a bit of extra tempo and thinning coming out of the deck at a pseudo random time. And it's going to basically give, give you three points of tempo plus thinning. Milton, which is, I would say, the stronger of the two, boosts an enemy unit by four, then boosts self by four. So six for six. But boosting up enemy units is often meaning boosting up your own units because you're going to steal the power back and it activates your leader's passive ability. And it's going to have another order bullet, which is going to synergize so well with Galeem. And this is going to be boost self by the last boost you gave an enemy unit this round. So you can play Milton. Then you can play Galeem, boost up an enemy card by 14 plus points, and then click the order ability of Milton and then boost Milton up by an additional 14, 15, whatever amount of points, which can be absolutely insane. <clears throat> Roderick, going to give you some um, consistency in this deck. Look at two random gold cards from your deck, then play one of them. Typically going to be using round three to fish for those last goals that you might be missed out on. Then false Siri, this is going to this is going to be an interesting card actually. So it's a disloyal card, so you play it on your opponent's side of the board, and then you get to play a tactic from your graveyard. Now we do play with Boohurts from leader ability. You always have access to a, a boo because of a leader ability guaranteeing you one. Also, the likes of we play Boohurts from hand. And of course, there's also going to be something like Battle Prep from Fion, which you can potentially use a Siri. Um, then it has another part of the ability which is interesting. And this is going to be that. Every single turn, Siri will boost self by one. On your opponent's side of the board, so you're thinking, why would you want to do that, giving my opponent an engine? Because false Siri also, once it reaches grace eight, so once it finally gets up to eight power, it will then move from your opponent's side of the board to your side of the board, and it will continue to boost itself even on your side of the board, making this card essentially like a eight plus point card that lets you replay a, a, a boo herd, which is nuts. So it's like a stronger Lydia for only six provisions, which is insane. Um, then we also play Blightmaker. This is going to move any card from the top of your to the top of your deck, and um, if well, and if you, if it's a mage, it will also spawn a um, guardian. So you're obviously going to use this typically on the mage assassin because when you move mage assassin to the top of the deck, mage assassin ability says play itself um, from the de from your deck and come out and damage a random enemy by two, so making this an 11 point play. It also thins your deck by one. Nilf Guardian Knight. This is going to boost enemy by two which means you're going to get the passive ability from your leader ability from this. So you're going to get the plus one when you play this. And obviously, again, boosting up enemy cards by two typically is value for yourself. So that's not a bad thing. Um, very, very strong card in this deck as well. Spotter, just there as a value card, basically. Look at the top three cards um, or units of your opponent's deck and then get armor equal to that card's base power. And then also... Um, or that card's power, should I say. And then on order ability, you can then, you can use however much armor and look that deep into the deck. So three armor, you can look three cards deep into the deck, four armor, four cards and whatnot. And then you can choose a card from your deck and gain vitality equal to that card's power. Or if it's a soldier, just boost it by that amount. So you can use this on Nilfgaard Knights or Tortoises for some very valuable points, 12 points potentially, um, this deck, which is quite valuable. Then Boo Herd, we already discussed, Major Assassin, we discussed, Tortoise, it's again going to function very similar to Nilf, uh, to Tortoise, uh, to Nilf Guardian Knight, rather. If it loses its armor, it will boost an, the highest enemy unit by three. Um, so that is going to, again, boosting up enemy units is good for you because it's going to basically mean that you're going to get those points back. And then last but not least, we have a Knight Challenger. This is going to gain vitality equal to the amount of boost an enemy unit has. 
And if your opponent doesn't boost their own units, you certainly will. So this will very easily come down with a number of vitality and then also as a passive ability or other a grace ability once it gets to grace eight, it'll boost all units in the battlefield, including your opponent's side of the board by one, which will again trigger your leader ability and also, you know, boost up your opponent's cards which you can then steal their power from later on so that is the deck guide like i said this deck is actually very very powerful especially in longer rounds if you win round one go into longer round three and you should be fine in pretty much most circumstances it's a new, new deck a new type of archetype which we haven't seen before um so this one is definitely going to be playing quite differently than anything you've played before um but it seems quite like it has a lot of potential and these cards some of them seem absolutely insane like ivar again absolutely nutty card in this deck anyway that's the deck guide let's get some gameplay now and see how the deck performs oh god not this mirror Speak your mind the oh lord not this mirror <laughs> this mirror seems like it's gonna be so just yeah yeah Why is everything this season a mirror on my first game of the deck? Like when I played Skoeta, it was a mirror first game. When I played Northern Realms, it was a mirror first game. Everything I play is a mirror on the first game. Did I see Skoeta win rate? Nope. Some milk maids. Like I have to win round one, I'm pretty sure this mirror is gonna be so bad for me if I don't win round one, right? Because final say is gonna be huge, I think. Not to scream so, it makes my hand more more. <laughs> <laughs>
least get boat clear out of him. Do I have to pass here then? I can wait, I get enough points to actually yes, go two down. Pog! That's good. And we got boat clear out of him. Seems decent. Okay. So we top deck into Defender. I think two Blight Makers, Tortoise, Ramon. Wait. Tortoise, Roman, and then question marks. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um. Can I live without Kahir? Don't have to. Onward, onward, to be with on the wind. Tech might need a purify. Not sure. Let their blood break their bones and spirit. <sighs> Gonna have to eat that. What if you try use leader when there's no enemy units? Boost one or more enemy units during your turn. Uh, play a boo hurt. How does boo hurt work if you don't have any? Boost an enemy unit by three, then boost an allied unit by three. I guess it won't work, right? So it says then. The fact that it says then and not and. Gilem Steel Defender. Uh, that doesn't mean the status, yes. I'm gonna do this now. And then I'm gonna play the False Suri. Play this than this. A noble plan indeed, I say. <laughs> Good Lord. This mirror is like such a fiesta. Wait, there are no unboosted enemy units. 
What a game. Your world should soon lapse into slumber as darkness descends. This mirror is such a fiesta. Holy crap. Because it works with the art to get aim. Interesting. That is a very interesting idea, actually. Huh. I wonder if this guy's playing like an all inversion. If he's playing all inversion, I got a heat wave, so it's fine. Devotion, which means it's not that kind of a dick. This is a fine vintage it would have made. <clears throat> Can you speak French? What? Why would I speak French? Also, I can't speak French. And if I could, why would I? But I can't, so I shan't. Okay, gills, sure. Have a boost. Another boost. Why don't you have another boost?
Okay, now why don't I have a boost? Yoink! And Yoink is in the chat? Roth? Looking for Roth. Find it. Might have to stay hit there. Uh, actually, no, it is because of this little shitter. Re. Oh. I actually just lined up to get it. I actually just played another card. Never mind, I forgot I've got a still vitality. Whoops. We're all good, chat. We are all Gucci. I must say, this deck is getting card advantage very easily. Almost every game I play, I'm either winning on even or making my opponent go two down. It's quite a powerful. Um, Oh shit, he had Winter Queen. He didn't have to. <laughs> he actually was ahead. Never mind. Lul. See, that's why you shouldn't listen to what I'm saying, Mr. Opponent. I'm just I'm just I'm I'm just checking if you're sniping. Smile. This was the this was the stream snipe skill check. And Mr. Opponent failed. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Tortoise is actually kind of not bad against Frost because it basically plays a 7 that hits by 2, so it's like 9, and then the 3 boosts on him, which is positive points for me actually, so it's, it's actually not bad against Frost, right? But I still would prefer to find other things though, so I guess I'm still gonna mulligan it away. Falser is so nice though, but I could brick. Meh, whatever. Syndicate fix when? Never. Syndicate will forever be broken. <laughs> I'm trying to say, I mean, there's something wrong with the fees. Of, I don't know if it's all the cards, some of the cards, but there is some problem with fees. The fact he's got to use a leader charge here means he can't use a leader charge on my Kahir, although he probably will have a bruiser or something available, so it's... Hmm. Play Palmer and soon or no targets. True. No point in dawdling. Uh, it would have been nice to have this done first, though, because I would like to have gotten. 
that into the tall story, but I mean, I guess it's too risky. Click Guillaume and click yeah. Then this and this. Fuglet! Hello, Mr. Fuglet. Wee! Points! Yay! Wait, this deck is broken. Assume you don't queue into Yurden. This deck's actually broken. What the hell? My veil. Boop. Defeat them with hunger, crush them with thirst. <sighs> there is but one punishment for traitors. I guess Dive Bear is an interesting idea for warriors and the beasts they could use and they could could actually be useful in a couple of matchups. Hmm. I need to read Dive Bear after this game again to see something about it. There's no payoff for the I mean, I could play one practically, but now there's payoff. So what do we start with then? I kind of want to use this for a boost, though. Um, hmm. What's the prac to play? I kind of don't want to play the knight, but like... Blightmaker? Uh, maybe it's just Blightmaker, lose two points. I mean, I guess I lose two points here, or I lose two points... Here. Yeah. Because I kind of want the knight to boost up opponent stuff for this, and this, and... Whatever else. Nah, yeah, Roderick is weird here. Yeah. gonna be a little bit annoying temper pass might actually be good if I can get hmm. is this a temper pass there I'm gonna try it In hindsight, knowing that I'm doing this type of play, I should have played differently. I should have actually done Knight first, then Blightmaker, since I'm going for this line of play. Yeah. Anyway, he needs to do 8 here. No, 9 here. Not quite enough. What is it? I get my long round 3, which is good. Okay. Very Pogarinos in the Chatterinos. Here, not even compost. 
Okay, so we have Roderick for one of these. I kind of want all of them. They're all pretty good, actually. I guess we don't get the heat wave, which is okay. We have enough tall punishers in the sand. I think it's fine. And then we can play the Falsary next. Yeah, if you morph frog this, you can't morph frog this, so it's whatever. <laughs> Clearly someone doesn't have a morph frog. Uh-oh. Uh oh, Mr. Opponent, you are in trouble! Wee. Oh, you can't do that! That's cheating! Fuck, I should play around that. I forgot this car can damage itself. Re! Uh I should just boost up the Siri. I forgot that this card can damage self. Mm. Than this, than this. This deck literally can only, like, if your opponent doesn't play Yurden, like, how do you lose? It's so broken. Like, your opponent has to have a Yurden. Or, like, multiple Tor Punishes. Any cool statuses to yoink? Just Veil? Okay. Weeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Follow me. No, where's my heat wave, dude? Right. And J Buckets with a tier one reset for 12 months. Thanks for Jimmy Buckets. And welcome back. <clears throat> Yodan? Ah, yes. Devotion Yodan. Pepper G. Wait, Q Girl Tactics Yodan. Already queued into it today. Already happened. Anyway, that is Deck Guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, it looks like Nilfgaard going to be quite strong yet again. And this new archetype, definitely one that um, has a lot of potential and some crazy combos that it can pull off. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section below. How are you finding Chronicles, the new expansion? Are you liking it? What decks are you guys playing? Let me know in the comment section below. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys again in the next one. Take care, everyone, and bye-bye.